This video covers analysis for the randomized quicksort and quickselect algorithms. You should know them before watching this. We'll see intuition and formal analysis for quickselect and then quicksort. Until that last analysis, there aren't any graphics. Sorry. In quickselect, when you partition the array, it takes linear time and afterwards you have one partition which is smaller than the pivot and one that's larger. If one partition has 90% of the original set and the number you're looking for is in that partition, it seems like you got a bit unlucky. You'd hope to do better than that. What happens if you get unlucky like that every time? You get a simple recurrence relation and any of the three methods we've seen for recurrence relations can be used to prove that it's linear. We could guess that it's linear and use the substitution method, expand it using the recursion tree method, or use the master method. Even if you're more pessimistic and imagine that you only get rid of 1% of the set each time you partition, or maybe 1% of the set each five times that you partition, you still get a linear runtime. It's just that the constants get worse. Okay, that's a good intuition, but what if we want to make it a bit more formal and accurate? I'm assuming that we're looking for the kth smallest item, where the first smallest item is the smallest item, the nth smallest item is the largest item, and all of the items are distinct. Our runtime might depend not only on n, but on k. Can we write down an accurate recurrence relation for that? So it takes linear time to partition, and for any i from 1 to n, there's an equal probability of picking the ith smallest item from the array as our pivot. If i is less than k, we need to recursively search all elements with rank larger than i for the k minus ith smallest element. If i equals k, we're done. And if i is greater than k, we need to search all elements with rank less than i for the kth smallest. You know what? Maybe that's a little too precise. It looks complex enough that I really don't want to solve it. I'll leave it as an exercise for the viewer. Instead, we'll make some pessimistic assumptions that aren't quite as clumsy as the ones we started with. Imagine you're running the algorithm against an adversary that gets to change the rank you're seeking after each time you partition, as long as it doesn't change it to something you've already discarded. But it can force you to always have to search the bigger partition. So given n distinct items, we still assume that we pick a random item as our pivot, but unless there's just one item, we never get lucky and pick it and we always have to recursively step into whichever partition has more elements. If your pivot has rank less than n over 2, you need to search everything that's larger than it. And if the pivot has rank larger than n over 2, you need to search everything smaller. We can simplify some repeated terms, and that recurrence relation is pessimistic, but also more realistic than our first pessimistic recurrence relation. It allows for the possibility that you get a really bad partition, like picking the absolute maximum value element when you're looking for something else, but that possibility is weighted by a realistic probability. So how do we solve that recurrence relation? Well, this is one where I'm glad to have a guess to start. Guessing that it's linear, we use the substitution method, plug in for the arithmetic series, and see that linear works. For my math, I make the simplifying assumption that n is even, but the result holds for odd n2. The appetizer's done. Time for our main meal, quicksort. Let's start with the same intuitive approach. If we break exactly in the middle, we get a well-known recurrence relation that gives us order n log n runtime. But what if we go back to our assumption that we get a pivot 90% of the way through the block? we can use the substitution method to show that that gives an order n log n relation, but already that's pretty ugly looking. You could also prove that with the Akrabazi extension of the master theorem. If we want more precision, unlike quickselect, we only have one parameter here. So let's again go back to write out the recurrence relation, assuming that we pick the ith smallest element as our pivot. And I'll assume 
that you're using the Lemuto partition on distinct elements. We'll have two recursive calls, one on the i minus one elements smaller than the pivot, and one on the n minus i elements larger than it. Wow, freaking beautiful, right? If you want me to work that out, Actually, this was the analysis in the first edition of the Corman book back from 1990, but now they have left it as an exercise. That's the analysis I saw from just before that book was published, back when I took the class. It's been replaced by a much more graceful analysis. So here is a really small array. And instead of asking how long it takes to run, I'm going to ask a much more limited question. If we run randomized quicksort, what's the probability that 3 will get compared to 17? If we happen to pick 9 as our first pivot, it will separate 3 and 17 into different partitions, and then during the entire rest of the sort, they won't get compared. Similarly, if I had chosen 7, 8, or 15, 3 and 17 also won't ever get compared. Only if we choose 3 or 17 as our first pivot will they get compared to each other. Because 3 and 17 are the minimum and maximum items, we will know after picking just one pivot if those values get compared. If one of them is chosen first, they get compared. Or if one of the four values between them gets chosen first, they don't. There's a one-third chance that they get compared because there are four values between them. Let's consider a bigger array, and to simplify it, the array holds integers 1 to 20. What's the probability of comparing the number 2 against the number 7 during quicksort? To make it a bit easier to see what's going on, I'll add a second view of the same values but in sorted order. Like before, there are four values between 2 and 7 in the sorted order, but now we have a lot more values that we can pick as a pivot. If we happen to pick 11 as our first pivot, it gets compared to everything, and both 2 and 7 fall into the partition of smaller elements. Unlike before, we picked our first pivot, but we still don't know if they're ever going to get compared to each other or not. Stepping into that partition on the left, if we pick 1 as our next pivot, it gets compared to the numbers 2 to 10, but both 7 and 2 are larger than the pivot 1, so they both fall into the same partition again, which still needs to be sorted, and we still don't know if they are going to be compared. As long as I keep picking pivots either larger than 7 or smaller than 2, 7 and 2 will both fall into the same partition, and I won't know yet if I'm going to compare them. But at some point, we'll pick a pivot of 2, 7, or something between them. If we pick 2 or 7 before anything between them, they get compared to each other. And if we pick something between them first, they get separated into different partitions and they won't ever be compared. Even though this looks different than the first small array with just 6 values, the probability that 2 and 7 get compared is still one third. The added values larger than 7 or smaller than 2 don't change that probability of comparing these two items. The important thing is that there are four values between them. More generally, we can calculate the probability that the ith smallest value is ever compared to the jth smallest value. If you want to know how many comparisons take place during the entire algorithm, we can sum that up over all possible i and j values. That might look a little bit complex, but not compared to that original recurrence relation. We manipulate it to get the inner summation to be the harmonic series, and it works out to order n log n comparisons. Because quicksort takes time proportional to the number of comparisons it performs, this gives us an order n log n expected runtime for quicksort. That's it for this one, but the sorting playlist has videos on sorting lower bounds and linear sorts. Right now, I have to go. My boils aren't going to lance themselves.